What's up everybody? This is Dimitri and today we're going to talk about a very important thing in content creation that will make your image stand out. And it doesn't really matter if it's a photo or a video. And before we start, I just want to say that I hope you all feel safe right now. I mean, the situation in the world is completely terrifying and I'm not going to jump into politics. I'm not going to talk about who's right or wrong. All I'm saying right now is the most important thing is that all innocent people are feeling safe and we have a brighter future very, very soon. So what is contrast? Contrast is a feature that helps our eyes to distinguish objects between each other and to actually understand the depth of the view. So we're going to talk today about five different types of contrast that will help you to make your composition much better. So the first type of contrast is color contrast. And this picture right now is a great example of a bad color contrast because on the background, as you can see, we have red LEDs and red flowers. On my foreground, I have the red jacket as well. So there is no contrast at all. So to get the best color contrast, we need to use color scheme like this one here. So all you need to do is to pick the opposite colors from the scheme and use that for your background and foreground as they will create the best contrast. So unfortunately, I don't have any green t-shirt or a jacket, but I can definitely change my background like this. Now, I think it got much better because now my background is green, my foreground is red, and as per the color scheme, the contrast is great. Has it got any better? Let me know in the comment section below, but I really think it did. That's why it's crucial to understand the environment we're going to be shooting. Otherwise, you're going to go to the forest and wear a green tracksuit. So next type of contrast is the contrast that is made using highlights and lowlights. What does that mean? Well, that means that you're using the areas that are lit by the light and the opposite ones that are hidden in the shadows. So you can control highlights and shadows using the light source or in post-production. So let me show you both. So this is the light I'm using right now. And as you see, I do get a little bit of shadow, but not very harsh. But if I change my light and move it somewhere to the side, then you will clearly see that I will get more shadows going on the side of my face. I can do even crazier thing. Give me one second. So I can do something like this and basically one side of my face is going to be completely filled with highlights and the other one is going to be more in shadows. But that will create even more dramatic looks. So it depends on what are you trying to achieve. So even if you don't have your own light source that you can move around, you can still control your shadows using yourself. For example, if you have sun, you can move around and the light is going to fall on your face from different angles. So you can control your shadows as well. And in terms of contrast, you can use post production to increase or decrease shadows and highlights. So if we want to get a better contrast, we can pull up the highlight and pull down the low lights, the shadows, so we get a better contrast. And other way around, if for example, you have harsh sunlight and you want to fix the image, obviously shooting in 10 bit and log profile is going to make things much easier, but you can always put your highlights down and pull your shadows up so that you get more information, which will also reduce the contrast. So next type of contrast is the focus contrast, and that is widely used in cinematography, and it's actually really easy to show. So for example, I want to make you focus on this can. If I'm just gonna show it like this, you're probably not gonna really focus on it because you're gonna see myself and the can and everything else on the background in a kind of similar way. But if I do something like this, 
you can clearly see that you get this background fully blurred and you see the object which makes you focus on it. This is called bokeh effect which makes the background blurry and your object in the focus. Next one is volume and size and this contrast is being created when you put small objects around big objects or vice versa or you actually put an object surrounded by a lot of space. To give you a great example of that I'm going to show you a small clip that we've taken using the drone in Canary Islands in Maspalomas Dunes when we were walking in kind of like a desert. It's basically a lot of free space with just sand around and me and my wife just walking there. And that creates this volume contrast where obviously we are the main object of the scene. Last but not the least is shape contrast. And to give you an example of that, let's move to my desk. So let's do a small experiment. I will show you something for the next three seconds. Are you ready? Get set. Go. Ooh, that was quick. Okay, so can you now tell me the number that was behind this triangle? Let's see if you got it right. Let me know in the comment section if you got it right. Did you guess it? Well, you probably did. And that is exactly because of the shape contrast. Because our eyes just distinguish that one object out of others and you could focus on it. So now you can combine these different types of contrast to first of all make your image much better but also to tell the story because you can help and guide your audience to look at things that you want them to look at. So I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comment section below if you did like it because it's gonna make a massive difference for me and for my channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.